What time is it? Second and third grade, welcome back. Today is our fifth and last day working on our still life unit. We spent two weeks making a cornucopia still life for Thanksgiving, and this is our third and last week working on our holiday feast still life. For this still life, we have made a family portrait that will hang on the wall behind our food feast. We made a window indicating what season this feast is taking place in. Now today we have to actually make the feast. So the first thing I want you to do, uh, we are going to glue what looks like a pattern. Uh, it's a tablecloth. You're going to glue the tablecloth in the bottom right hand corner. But this time I don't want any background paper showing. This butts up right to the bottom corner, right to the edge of the paper. The reason we're doing that is because of the way the picture is cropped. There are probably other plates at the table, maybe you can see the kitchen, maybe you can see the chandelier, but the way this picture is made, all of those things are cropped out. We just see one plate, one window, one family portrait. The next thing I want you to do, I want you to glue your window on the left-hand corner, leave some green on the top and on the left. Next is glue your family portrait in the top right corner of your paper. Uh, leave some background paper showing on the top and on the right. Like I mentioned with the cornucopia still life, we want these foods to kind of overlap each other. So the first thing I need to do as far as the food goes is glue the plate overlapping my tablecloth and my background. After I do that, if you treat your plate like a clock face up at 12 o'clock, we're gonna glue mashed potatoes and I'm gonna give you a little square for butter to give your picture a little more color. Uh, these might not be foods you like, but they are foods that are colorful and will make your picture colorful. And that's what's most important. I'm not asking you to eat any of this stuff. In fact, please don't, because it's made out of paper. Next to the mashed potatoes at the top, I'm gonna to give you paper for stuffing. And some people like to decorate their stuffing with carrots and celery and things like that. To the right of the mashed potatoes, I'm going to give you mac and cheese. I'm very picky when it comes to my mac and cheese. I'll put that right there. I will slice up green paper for your green beans. And then I'm going to glue a turkey leg. I'm going to give you a purple puddle for your cranberries. I will give you cranberries. We will glue all this together. You can add your own food if you want. If you don't like any of this, maybe your family eats sushi. Maybe they eat ham. It's entirely up to you, whatever food you want to put on here. I can't wait to see these. Good luck. See you next time. Bye. Okay, kids, for today's pro tip, when you're making a mural, I like to use the overhead projector and project it on here. Now, there are some problems with that. You need a dark room, and when you're doing it outside, the only way you have a dark room is if you wait till the sun goes down. The other problem is, the county has installed these wonderful, super bright outdoor lights. They used to be the orange sodium lights. These white lights are way better. They're more powerful. Um, unfortunately, they are smaller than the old sodiums, so on some of my murals, I will have to go back and patch it up, yay. But one thing I've found that if I come at night after the sun goes down, these lights are on and they are really bright. So I used to think of ways like, could I put cloth over these? But then the cloth is too heavy. These don't stick out far enough, they fall down. Then I thought, what if I covered it up with a box? But even then, light, light leaks out. And even if you tape a box with duct tape, the walls get humid and sweaty. So one thing that I've found, that works great is aluminum foil. It is pretty inexpensive. It wraps to fit any object that you're wrapping and it doesn't let any light leak through. So I can just wrap this light with tin foil. Maybe the other one. Voila. 
voila, now my wall is dark. And I didn't damage the school or anything. I didn't put tape up here. I think that works great. So my pro tip to you is this, adapt to your surroundings. If you find yourself painting a mural in tight quarters or whatever problems may arise. Ooh, no, better yet, adapt your surroundings to fit your needs. Better yet, why not do both? Adapt to your surroundings and adapt your surroundings to fit your needs. That's it for this week. See you next time. <laughs> Bonus points! Second and third grade, this is easy. These are way too easy. Last week, I wanted to know how many seasons there were. The week before that, I wanted you to tell me how many pets you have. Um, today, just tell me what your favorite meal is or show me in your picture. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for bonus points this week. Talk to you next time. Bye.